Hi my lovely Frosty fam, it's me Karen Frost here at Now Decadence, welcome to my channel, welcome one and all. In this video it's a really really long one because I take forever when I'm doing my own nails, I yeah take my time, um, hand dolly is a much quicker process but when I'm doing my own nails I do faff an awful lot and I take my time and I watch a movie or something whilst I'm doing my nails. So it's a long video, even though it's sped up, it's still gonna be long because it takes me forever. Anyway, so I'm gonna show you all your bits and bobs that I'm using. That Protec gel, that's no longer available, but SBD London have a very, very similar uh, poly gel type product called Signature Gel, which I absolutely love using and recommend. But obviously I don't want my Protec gel going out of date or going off or, anything like that and I don't want it to go to waste so I'm going to use it I'm also going to play with the premier gels I haven't used those for a while I might actually sell them because I really don't use them very often they're still good I just don't really use them very often because I've got so much SBD London and I've also now got some Madame Glam and some other bits and bobs so I may sell my premier gels um, on eBay or something we'll see anyway so I have applied my tips, prepped my nail beds, removed all the cuticle from the nail bed area because you've got it. If you don't remove the cuticle, which is the dry skin that's attached to the nail blade, if you don't get that off, you will have lifting. So I've done all my cuticle work, etched the nail plate slightly, it doesn't need really deep etching or anything, applied my tips. And now I'm going to apply the rubber base because I always like a base coat even though it's um, quite thin it still acts as, as your thin clear base as it were so yeah always add your base coat because that's got the best adhesion properties anyway I all I did was um, dehydrate nail plate sometimes you if you want to you can use a non-acid primer with gel I sometimes do it I sometimes don't it depends on my mood on this occasion I didn't so yeah I just dehydrated did all my you know nail prep did my tips dehydrated again and then added my base coat and now I'm going to add the poly gel and as you can see it's really fairly easy to squeeze this tube so I was having a good day with my hands that that well mm, I say a good day my hands weren't hurting as much that day so I was able to squeeze it out of the tube straight onto my nail as opposed to what I sometimes do squeeze it onto a palette and then use a spatula to pick it up and place it on the nail that way so that I'm not having to squeeze the tube over and over kind of thing anyway enough about me squeezing the bloody tube <laughs> So I'm going to pat and press and nudge that product where I want it to go. I'm using the SPD London Slip Solution with it, which you all know smells divine. It smells like baby powder. It's the most beautiful smelling slip solution I've ever had. And I, it's my absolute favorite slip solution. I don't like the thought of using base coat to do this because that just, mm, yeah, no. That doesn't sit well with me. I don't think that, that, yeah. I don't like the idea of using a base coat with it because that will kind of mix in with it and make it really mushy in my opinion. No, I've not tried it, but yeah, it doesn't sit well with me to use a base coat as a slip solution. I'd rather use what it, it was designed for. So the slip solution was designed for it, not the base coat so I'd rather stick with the slip solution so anytime it starts to feel a little bit tacky or a bit sticky I will wipe my brush off dip it in the slip solution dab off the excess and then pat and press and swipe and drag and whatever movement I need to do to get that product where I want it to go and I do flash cure in between so I flash cured that first bead that I added and now I'm just adding a little bit more to make sure that it's the same thickness as my other hand because I've already done my other hand. So I want to make sure that both hands have a similar thickness of nail. 
So I do compare my left hand and my right hand as I'm going along. I want to make sure my apex is in the back third. I want to make sure that the tip isn't too thick, but I've got enough to file into margin wise. I want to make sure it's nice and even all the way around. And I look at the nail from all different angles. Poly gel is fun to work with, but it's not any quicker for me than doing acrylic really, because I'm a faffa and the whole point of the poly gel is that it's a mixture of gel and acrylic and has their good points combined so you don't have the you've got the the wonder of a gel as in it doesn't stink of you know because monomer stinks to high heaven we all know the smell of monomer so you don't get that awful smell but you get the sort of the molding consistency of acrylic but then you get the fun of the gel where you it's not actually going to set in place so there's no time limit until you cure it so it's kind of like the best of acrylic the best of gel all into one and yeah and you just use it pat it and press it and you treat it like you would the gel and acrylic combined and that's that's the air it's it's a hybrid product, it's a fun product, but for me, like I said, it's not really any quicker because I'm a faffa and I don't have any time limits and I can faff as long as I like. I will tend to smooth it and smooth it and smooth it and smooth it, <laughs> trying to get it as perfect as possible, when really that's not necessary because it does file really easily. You don't have to perfect it as much as I do. I'm just extra. So yeah, especially when I'm doing my own nails, I'm so pernickety. So you don't have to um, smooth it out quite as much as I do, but it does file easily. So you do have less filing to do if you do more of your brush, technically. But if you're a faffer like me, you're going to file loads anyway, because it's just the way I am. Um, I have some OCD tendencies and in certain things it will become apparent and it, it, it does become apparent when I'm smoothing the nail forever when I don't really need to and when I'm filing more than I need to that's where you see some of my OCD tendencies come out on camera I have of different ones that you know I live with on a day-to-day -day basis uh, usual life around the house around the kitchen around wherever but on on camera when I'm doing my nails you will um, you may be able to pick up on some of my tendencies my OCD tendencies with um, the way I do nails because I'm a bit of a perfectionist can't help it it's the way I am so yeah you don't have to smooth as much as I do but it will give you less filing to do in the end so weigh it up it's your pros and cons more work with the brush less work with the file or less work with the brush more work with the file the choice is yours but as you can see i'm not having to apply massive pressure you are really gently nudging the product into place and i'm trying to get it even from sidewall to sidewall so you see i lift up the nail i look underneath it i make sure the sidewalls are um nice um, and even on thickness wise you don't want to bulk out the sides too much but you do want to make sure it's a nice even coverage and that it is going sidewall to sidewall even arch all the way from side to side and then tapping it in by that cuticle area now that is definitely worth taking the time to do nicely because the more you do with your brush by the cuticle area, the less you've got to do with your file by the cuticle area, which means you're less likely to cut yourself, which is I also have a tendency to do. I don't cut other people, but I always end up just butchering my own fingers. <laughs> I think a lot of nail techs do that. We're less careful with ourselves than we are with our clients. So yeah, when filing around the cuticle area, it isn't easy to uh, nick the skin. So yeah. Do more of your brush then you're less likely to cut yourself when you're doing your cuticle filing for sure and you can be really accurate with the brush and because it doesn't set up until you put it in the lamp you can really take the time to perfect that cuticle area make sure it's nice and neat compare it to the other hand flush cure that for 10 seconds 
I'm literally only going to keep flash curing until I finished all fingers and then I'll cure the all of them in one go for 60 seconds so again adding some more where it is necessary so I flash cured it in place to make it easier so that when I add that second bead to build up the apex area I'm not having to worry about the first bead um, being pushed out of place so that's why I flash cure it once you flash cured it in place it's not going to move anymore and you can just build up on top of it without worrying about um, losing the shape anywhere else along the nail so just you can see I'm just blending and tapering and pulling that bead in and blending it into the rest of the previous product so there's no harsh lines or you can't really tell where I've added that second bead or anything so onto the index finger again squeezing straight from the tube onto the nail estimating the amount I'm going to need Then dipping my brush into the slip solution, removing the excess on the paper towel and pat and press out that product and create a lovely shaped nail as I go. Now, when I say pat and press, I'm not digging it in. It's a light touch. You don't need to use a lot of pressure to move this product around. Um, some poly gels or acro gels are harder than others. This one in particular is nice and soft but not too soft so it's easy to maneuver i like working with this one it's very similar to the spd london one which i also find really easy to work with it's not like really sticky or anything or really mushy it holds its shape but it moves when you press it you know i like it it's not too hard or anything like that and as you can see you can use your brush to really smooth that surface very very light touch though when you're swiping and smoothing the surface really light touch Just gentle strokes teasing the product where you want it to go and smoothing out any lumps and bumps and then we can flash cure that of course and then I'll check it from all different angles and compare it to my other hand and make sure it's a similar thickness to my other hand well my other finger or my other hand just need a little bit more at the apex area so just blending that bead in placing it where I need the extra thickness to go blend that into the previous product just tap and tap and tap and you see the different angles I, I place my brush at so when I'm going right by the cuticle area you see I'll angle the brush and make sure it's not touching the skin if it is touching the skin you see what I'm doing swipe round get it off the skin do not leave it touching the skin because that's the quickest way you will get lifting on to the thumb so last one same again squidge out a strip of product so make it a little bit thicker by the back third where the cuticle area is and get it thinner towards the free edge then you can pat it out you can start at the cuticle area if you want I'm starting at the free edge first and working my way down doesn't matter which way you start it's up to you sometimes I start at the cuticle area first and work my way down sometimes I work from the free edge and work up to the cuticle area it's up to you just as long as you are getting the product in the place it's supposed to be then there's no problem it does self level to a certain degree now not very quickly of course but um, if you work too slow it can start slipping into your side walls in your cuticle area so pay attention to that if you're uh, not working quickly now you see it started to slide into my cuticle area and my side wall area so i'm using my brush to nudge it out and make sure it's not touching the skin always always ensure that it's not touching the skin before you flash cure it so i'm going to flash cure that for 10 seconds and then I'm going to have another look at the nail and make sure it's the correct thickness. I look at it from all different angles. I've got a bit of a dip here. So I'm going to fill that area in. Blend in that product. Really blend it in. See how blended it is. You can't tell that I've added another bead. Really blend it in. Make it a seamless um, 
blend <laughs> can't think of another word um yeah just look it's seamless you can't tell that i added some more products and i just noticed another little dip on that side where now that particular area you have to be very careful with because if you don't have enough on that area there that's where the nail is likely to snap so make sure you've got it strong enough in that area that's where your natural free edge ends yeah make sure you've got enough because that's a stress point there so then i'll cure it all for 60 seconds remove the tacky layer and then have a last one last look before i put my stuff away i always like to cleanse twice that's just my personal preference to make sure there is absolutely no sticky stuff left so i do always cleanse twice and then i'll take a look at the nails and compare it to my other hand i take a good look and i noticed there was a few little dips that needed sorting out so really i shouldn't have removed the tacky layer yet because I, i'm adding more product but it's not the end of the world just add your product blend it in like i said before make sure it's a seamless add that you can't tell that you've added any product to it and it'll be fine just a little bit on that very very free edge to square that off i'm so fussy i really am very fussy with doing my own nails I faff a lot but I want to make sure that the nails are nice and even so when I look from underneath both edges of the nail are the same thickness all the way from the free edge right down to where it meets the nail bed I want to make sure it's nice and even that's how you get a nice shaped nail don't want any dips or any low spots so once I've blended all of those in I will of course oh of course cure it for 60 seconds give it a full cure if you're using a more opaque color it's always a good idea to flip your hand over and then cure the underside for 60 seconds as well i didn't do it on this occasion because this the light penetrates this particular color really well but if you're using one that's more opaque and the light has trouble penetrating do flip your hand over and, and cure it underneath the lamp for a full 60 seconds on both sides so top and flip your hand and cure it the underside as well for 60 seconds and now it's time to file are you a frosty filing freak if you are not please skip ahead to that timestamp in the corner of the screen and you can skip the filing but for my frosty filing freaks here we go on this occasion the routine i'm going with is to do the cuticle area first so i'm just using a diamond bit uh, my cuticle area was fairly neat so i didn't need to use a carbide bit or anything with really harsh flutes on it a diamond bit worked just fine there wasn't too much blending to do like i said because i was quite accurate with the brush so it's a case of just making sure that it is flush to the nail and that it's a nice curve going up and i'll make sure none of it is on the skin if i've missed any bits with my brush i will get it with this bit so seal that cuticle area, make it flush. Make sure that when you're doing that, that you're not digging into the natural nail though. Be careful about your angles. Your angles are very important when you're doing the cuticle area because if you angle your um, e-file bit too steeply, you will dig into your natural nail and that's how you get lines of fire. So be careful with that area. Once I've done that, I'm going to do the side walls and the free edge. Make sure the side walls are nice, nice and sharp and straight. Make sure that free edge is nice and squared off and even. And you'll see I stop and I look often because I want to make sure that I'm not making one side taper more than the other because I don't want a wonky nail. I want it to go out straight. So I stop and I turn my hand and I hold it up and I look at it forward on as well as from the angle that I'm filing at. I'll look at it but I'll also turn my hand around and, and look make sure it's going straight because that's how you'll notice if the nail is going wonky and then you can correct it. I'm using a coarse file to do this. Um, you can do this with a 180 because um, Polygel is a softer product, but I'm so used to using my 180. So it's a 100 one side, 80 the other side grit. The um, uh, It's backwards with nail files. The higher the number, the lower the grit. So the lower the number, 
the um, harsher the grit is so a 180 is a softer file than a 100 okay just bear that in mind so file 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 make sure it's nice and straight stop and look often really really stop and look often brush off the dust so I can see what I'm doing change my e-file bit and now I've switched to just a sanding band now this is where doing the um, work with the brush pays off is I'm only just just even out and I'm not really debulking per se because I don't have an awful lot of over product on the nail overload of product on the nail so I'm mostly I'm just contouring and shaping the nail and making sure it's nice and even surface wise so I'll just use this is a fine sanding band you could use a medium if you wanted it's not on a high speed at all because it's not necessary like I said poly gel or acri gel files a lot um, it's a lot softer so it files a lot easier than acrylic so you don't need this on a high speed or anything and with sandy bands if you put it on a high speed you'll feel the burn very very quickly so never use your sanding bands on a high speed anyway regardless of what product you are um, filing I wouldn't I personally wouldn't use a sanding band any higher than a 10 max because they heat up so fast so I'm not I've not even got it on a 10 at this point I think I've got it on like a 7 because yeah you don't need a sanding band on a high speed they're not made to go on a high speed if you're going to be needing to do a lot of filing then switch to a carbide bit something that's got flutes on it that um, or a ceramic bit that will eat the acrylic and can um, work on a higher speed sanding bands are not made to go on a high speed so I will just look at that nail from all different angles. I'm making sure that that very free edge of the tip is no thicker than a credit card. And I'm making sure there are no lumps and bumps that it's all blended in. I'm making sure that that um, edge that I filed into the side walls, I'm making sure that that blends in to the rest of the nail so that the nail has a curve, that those harsh angles on the side walls um, disappear and are rounded off because you don't want that that harsh line on each side of the nail it doesn't look nice just make sure you contour it in so i will stop and pay attention to that very tip because like i've mentioned before in many of my videos i cannot abide a thick free edge it makes life more difficult with picking things up and it's just quite unsightly it looks much neater and much nicer and aesthetically pleasing if your free edge is nice and thin no thicker than a credit card so if you turn a credit card on its side and you look at how thick it is that's what the thickness you're going for on your very free edge then as it, the nail goes back up towards the cuticle area the thickness will get thicker it will the nail will get thicker as it goes along till it reaches your apex which is your highest point which is the thickest point of the nail where the stress area is and then it tapers off slowly down towards the cuticle area and goes very thin again yeah that's just the the structure of a well balanced well shaped nail with the filing routine it doesn't matter what routine you use however it does matter that you stick to that one routine on that particular set of nails i have many different filing routines but i will use just one routine at a time per set of nails so whatever I do on one finger, I'm going to follow through and do on all the other fingers as well. And I'm going to do it the same way on the opposite hand also. So I'm just sharpening up those sides once more, making sure that it's nice because this is a lower grip um, file. This is a 180. So it's a smoother finish than the 8100. And 8100, because it's so coarse, it gives a, a much... Um, more rougher surface so i'm just smoothing the free edge and the sidewalls just with that 180 just to make sure it's nice and good and then just to be extra because you know what i'm like i'm gonna just give it a once over with the buffing file so i'll go up one sidewall around the cuticle area down the other side wall and then the body of the nail and that's how I get a really smooth no lumps no bumps just 
perfect for gel application nail and it's also thinning it ever so slightly because gel the layers of gel polish will add thickness to the nail you can't really avoid it um, it's just because gel is a thick product and you add, you, you add a few layers it will bulk out the nail slightly it does add thickness so what you want to do is make sure that your nails are just that little bit thinner to make space for the application of the gel so that your nail doesn't end up looking really fat and big and bulky okay so just um, bear that in mind nearly finished it's whizzing over the surface and as usual i stop and i look and i make sure the nail is going the way i want it to go i prefer using these um buffing files to the buffing blocks i find these easier to hold i seem to struggle with holding the buffing blocks i don't know that square well rectangle buffing block sponge blocks i find them more difficult to handle i find these a lot easier for me to angle and, and get them the way i want them to go kind of thing i don't know I've got loads of buffing blocks, so I will use them, but I do prefer these buffing files. And this one is from SVD London. I love this one. It's really good. So remove all the dust and I, and I will go on the underside of the nail. Make sure there are no frills. I can't stand bits underneath my nail. No, 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 no. I have to get them out. So any bit of those thrills, frills that are underneath the nail, I'll get them with the buffing block. Then I'll give the nails a good once over. Make sure that they are a similar thickness. And I'm just showing you how they go from side wall to side wall. Trying to make sure that they're even from one side to the other. Just giving you a little bit of a view and then making sure there are no frills underneath. No, get them out. Can't stand them. If you leave them under there, you're likely to pick at them and then it could um, you could get a chunk out of your nail. You don't want to do that. So do make sure you, you take away all the frills. So I've given my hands a wash and now I'm going to use some of these decals. Now these decals are from Rachel Hanks at uh, printbyexample.com I do have a discount code which is Karen10 for orders of £40 or over you're welcome to use that it's not an affiliate code it's just a discount code for anyone to use including myself so what I'll do is I'll cut around those decals as close to the image as possible and I'll just cut out a few because I'm not doing every single nail so I'll just cut out a few as I go, get them all prepared. So yeah, well, I'm really close and then, but not cutting the actual image. My fingers were hurting cutting them. So I thought I'd switch to my other scissors and I was still having trouble. Oh, my hands were doing really well. And then when I was cutting these, I, because I've obviously, this is after I filed and everything, my hands are starting to feel really tired. So I kept switching to different scissors, trying to find one that wouldn't hurt my hands as much, but they were all, I was, I was having difficulty with all of them cramping my hands. So yeah, it is what it is. Anywho, so I've given the nails a wipe over with some rubbing alcohol. You can use acetone if you so wish. That will melt the surface of the nail, make them even smoother. But I'd, I'd prefer to just do it with rubbing alcohol because I don't want them too smooth. I want the, the gel polish to be able to grip onto something, you know. If they're too smooth, then your gel, poli gel polish could maybe peel and you don't want that so i've used rubbing alcohol because soap when you wash your hands has moisturizers in in it so it's always good after you've washed your hands to just give them a wipe over with some rubbing alcohol before you begin now this is actually done the um after i'd cut out all the bits i was like Ugh, no my hands are not having none of it so i actually um waited till the next day and then i did the gel polish so after i'd cut out those bits this is the next day so yeah my hands sometimes they play ball sometimes they don't and if they're not playing ball i just have to just stop what i'm doing and go and rest and yeah so sometimes it can take me three days to do my nails because i have to keep stopping so mm. It is what it is. 
I get there eventually, but I'm, I've learned not to try and push things because I've noticed when I push things, my body reacts in rebellion and then I'm out for a week and I don't want to do that. I'd rather be out for a day than out for a week recovering. So yeah, it can take me three days to do my nails. And I also take my time when I'm doing my nails because it's me time and it's, like I say, I just watch a movie or I put on, um, I watch some YouTube, like some podcasty type YouTube channels. And yeah, just do my nails, take my time. There's no rush. It's not like it's a client that's, that's got to go out the door in an hour. It's not, it's not like that. I take my time when I'm doing my own nails. Sit in my own little world, pottering away. So as we are applying gel polish onto product, there's no need for a base coat. If you're doing this on natural nails, you will need to apply your base coat first. But do remember, I had a base coat on my natural nails before I applied the product. So no need to add a th further base coat um, on the uh, nails before you apply the color. And as you can see, I'm just painting them all white because these particular decals, um, they're not on a white background, so they need a white background. I could have sculpted the nails in white acrylic. It probably would have been quicker, but I was, my plan was to do these nails, keep them for a few days and then do another design on them so that I get two videos out of the one set of nails as it were. It didn't work out that way because I ended up not very well. It is what it is. These things happen. Things don't always go according to plan. So had I planned on keeping these nails on for two weeks, I probably would have just sculpted them in white acrylic to save me having to um, paint them white. So just, uh, yeah, if you want to make things easier on yourself, then just sculpt them in white and then you don't have to bother with gel polishing them white. So this is the second layer, especially with white and black, but in gel, with gel polish in general, keep your layers thin. It is far, far better to do, to do two thin layers of gel polish than it is to do one thick layer. If you are applying your gel polish too thickly, it can wrinkle, it can not cure properly. And like I said, because it, white and black um, they're very very opaque so you have to be careful the light has trouble penetrating through the, the through the gel polish to cure it all the way so you want to keep sh those layers really really thin if you're applying it too thickly the light is unlikely to be able to penetrate through it all and cure it all and then when it comes to filing it off you're going to have uncured products in the dust and you don't want that because that gets everywhere and it can possibly lead to contact dermatitis which is an allergic reaction to nail products which you don't want it causes overexposure as we say in the industry so keep the layers nice and thin it's better to do even if you had to do three layers it's better to do three thin layers than it is to do two thick ones and like i said you don't want it to wrinkle because if it wrinkles it looks awful it just doesn't look good at all so yeah keep them nice and thin that way it's not going to wrinkle and it is going to cure all the way through. I like to make sure that I cap the side walls and the free edge on this second coat so that I'm not losing my shape too much. That's why I don't do it on the first layer. I only do it on the second layer. And because I've got shaky hands and um, I make a right mess, I get a little brush with some acetone or some rubbing alcohol and then I will tidy up around the cuticle area and the side walls, making sure that I'm removing any of the gel polish that is touching the skin, getting it off. Do not cure that on your skin. It will cause lifting and it just doesn't look very nice. This is the easiest way to get a nice even if that if you've got shaky hands that is nice even cuticle and sidewall area is just use a little brush and like i said acetone or rubbing alcohol get it off the skin and that also gives you a nice curve around the cuticle area so it's nice and neat not, not everybody's got steady hands. If you've got steady hands, good for you. That's wonderful. You don't have to waste time doing this part. But for me, yeah, I have, yeah, I can't 
it's not often I, I mean I do get away with it sometimes some days I have a good day and I can um, be really neat with my application and not have to do any cleanup but not not on this occasion there was plenty of cleanup this time <laughs> So I'll cure that for 60 seconds and now I'm adding that um, Elite 99 one. Now it's really hard to see what it looks like um, on camera but this gives such a pretty blue sparkly finish to the nail. It's really pretty. You can't see it on camera so much but it's it gives such a nice sparkle and I just thought it was a nice subtle effect to bring some of the blue onto some of the other nails is yeah so yeah it's not as noticeable on the camera it's you see it much more in real life it's such a pretty blue sparkle i really like this i'm just going to do a thin layer of this because like i said I'm not trying to bulk the nails out and gel polish is thick so it's very easy to lose your shape so keep these layers nice and thin very very thin layer give it once over make sure it's all okay cure that for 60 seconds and now i'm going to apply some base coat this is to ensure that my decal is easy to apply that i can slide it around as much as i need to now i've cut this one into a, a triangle so I'm going to, because I've done one hand slightly different than the other hand. So I'm just going to peel that away after I've soaked it in water for about 10 seconds. And I've only applied the base coat where I'm applying the decal. And that's just to help me be able to manoeuvre and smooth it out as much as I need to without it drying in place. I'll just push it and you saw I just cut some notches at the cuticle area that's to help the decal sit flat on the nail it makes life a lot easier if you just cut a couple of notches in it just smoothing out and removing some of the excess base coat I'll flash cure that in place for 10 seconds and then I'm comparing to the other hand deciding where I'm going to add the next decal so I'll put that in the water get the base coat out a thin layer again which is literally just for help with maneuvering the decal in, without it drying in place before I'm happy with the placement it's a good little trick to do I'll just remove the decal from the water, tap off the excess on the paper towel and then apply it to the nail, cut some slits by the cuticle area to help the decal sit nice and flush without wrinkling. And because I've got that base coat there, I can slide that decal where I want it to go and faff about with it as much as I need to get it exactly where I want it. And because these decals are so large, look, it covers my entire nail. And these are long nails and I still had to cut some of it off. I love these. They're so awesome. And um, Rachel actually does the ones with the white background on them now. So, oh, perfect. They're massive. You can wear them on extra long nails or you can cut them down for shorter nails. But she does them in all different sizes. So you can buy small, medium and large. So it fits any shape um, and any size nails. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Love them. Especially as, you know, trying to draw these roses would have been really hard for me to do because I can't draw. So using these to get such a beautiful design on. Oh, love it. What's not, love? What's not to love? Hey, eh? What's not to love? Awesome. Such a beautiful effect. I love, I love how these roses looked. So just cut off the excess off the free edge there and then once I've got it nice and smoothed out I will cure it here we go flash cure it for 10 seconds and then I'll just use a nail file to remove the excess from the free edge and the side walls it's very um, because the decal is very thin, it doesn't take much to file off the excess. 
There we go. Second one. File off the excess. And this way I know that when I top coat, I'll, it will be totally encapsulated. So I just used a bit of um, rubbing alcohol and lint-free wipe to remove all the dust from those nails and the other nails that any of the dust went on. And then I'm going to encase the decals in some base coat just to make sure that they are totally sealed in. And then later I will top coat over this. But I'm, I'm using the base coat to kind of encapsulate them. That way I know the decal is not going to lift or peel off in any way. It, see, all these layers, now you know why I make the nails a little bit thinner. All these layers do add up and add bulk to the nail. So definitely make sure that your nail is a little bit thinner than you want it to be at the very end. Because once you've added all these layers of gel polish, it does add up. So same on this decal fingered. This, no, this nail, <laughs> I've lost my words. <laughs> Same on this decaled nail. We'll uh, encapsulate it with the base coat. It's not, not a thick layer by any means. You don't have to be a thick layer, but just make sure it is all the way around. You see, I'm sealing all of those edges with that base coat and removing any dust. <laughs> so, Cure that for 60 seconds. That's a full full cure on that. And now it's time to bling it, baby. Oh, yes. Get the crystals out. So I'm going to use my SPD London No Wipe Sticky Diamond Gel. And this is w wicked. It's wicked. It's brilliant for adding your crystals. And it's a no wipe one. So it doesn't leave any tacky layer or anything. Apply that with that nib because you can be so precise with it. I love it. And then just add my crystal. So I'm adding some really tiny AEB crystals around that triangle of uh, decal that I added. So I'm just going to whiz around, add all the crystals. And whilst I'm doing that, let's have a chat, shall we? How are you doing? I hope everyone's doing well. It's a wet and rainy and dismal day today. It's dark and horrible and windy and rainy and ugh. It's a bit like um, how I'm feeling inside. Yeah, I've not been feeling great, hence this video is late again. I've missed my Friday upload. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. It's Saturday today whilst I'm doing this voiceover and I don't know if I'm going to get this up today or tomorrow. So either Saturday or Sunday this video will go up. I'm sorry, it's late again. Ugh, I've just not been having a good time of it really. Mentally and physically, I've just been a bit of a wreck really. So I take breaks when I need to. I call like I do is apologize for the lack of content. I do I do worry about those things as well, but I'm not gonna force myself to try and be happy when I'm not. So yeah, if I'm not feeling great, you won't get a voiceover and no voiceover, no video. Sometimes I'll add a video without doing the voiceover, but I've noticed you guys miss hearing me. So yeah, I prefer not to upload a voiceover where I'm feeling crappy. Just uh, just wait till I'm feeling a bit better and I'm feeling a little bit more positive today and I'm not in as much pain. So I thought I'd get this voiceover done. Um, just take a couple of hours out to do this, get this video edited and voiced over and then I can leave it uploading whilst I um, spend the rest of the day with the family. You know, anyway, how are you? What you been up to? Anything interesting? Or have you been bored, silly? What you been doing? Any new shows on Netflix you're watching? Oh, anyone seen the Britney Spears documentary? Isn't it sad? Oh, how sad. I feel so awful for her. That poor woman has been through hell. Her father has put her through hell. Oh, and the paparazzi, what they've done to that poor girl. They destroyed her. It's horrible. I feel so bad for her, but... Um, He's been suspended as her conservator now, which is awesome. Oh, she's going to get her freedom back, which is brilliant. Poor woman. You know, they took her kids. They 
forced her to work. Oh, it's awful. When you see things like that, you realise your life really isn't that bad, you know? You might be wallowing in self-pity for a while, but you see what other people are going through, you realise actually your life isn't that bad, you know? Kind of puts, puts things in perspective. Well, it does for me. I don't know if it would for you, but it does for me. Anyway, so we added some more crystals so i did sort of a necklace design on the uh, middle finger and now on the thumb i'm going to do it the same as the thumb on the other finger so it's just two lines around the uh, free edge sort of like a bracelet style add some of those little ones and some of the blue crystals why not get it all blinged up it's disappointing that you can't really see the blue sparkles you can sort of slightly see the blue sparkles on the white polish that I put on, but in person it looked really pretty, those blue sparkles. It's a shame it doesn't pick up on camera. I did manage to get it to show on one of the photos though that you'll see at the end, you'll be able to see the blue sparkles on one of the close-ups. So do stay till the end because the, the photos and the video footage is at the end as usual. So I'll just make sure that those are all nice and lined up straight because it will bug me if any of them are wonky and I cure it wonky it will drive me nuts <laughs> flash cure them in place because they'll get a full, full cure when I cure the top coat so now it's time to top it off and keep it tough yes top coat time so I will top coat all the nails and I will top coat around the crystals, never over the top of them. If you top coat over the crystals, you will lose the facets and the facets is what makes it sparkle and shine. So just go around them, but the top coat up against them, which kind of gives them a bit of a shrink wrapped if claw effect, which helps to hold them in place. But just don't go over the top of them. And because we're top coating, you know what that means. It means we are very close to the end of the video. Like I said, there is some video footage of the finished set and some photos. And there is a close up of the blue sparkles as well on the photos that you will see at the end. So I'm just going to keep top coating all around those crystals. I will get my detailer brush out and really get up against this i'll do as much as i can with my the brush from the bottle but then i'll get my detailer out as you can see and i will really make sure that that top coat is right up against all of those crystals because i don't want any of them to come off even though they're held in with the diamond gel adding the top coat right up against them really does help to secure them as well it's definitely worth doing so I'll even out I'll always brush over the nails before I cure them because the top coat can pull at the ends of the nail and at the free edge and it will make you lose your shape very very easily so do make sure you remove any excess from the side walls and the free edge before you cure the nails so just using that detail you see right up against those crystals pushing that top coat right up against them get around that cuticle area make sure it's nice and neat there we go up against those crystals sorted you see what i'm doing i'm brushing down over the very free edge that's because i'm making sure that the top coat's not pooling at the sides it's so easy to lose the shape of your nails with your top coat and that would be really annoying so to save you having to file and reshape the nails afterwards just pay attention before you cure it and make sure that none of the top coat has slid and pulled around that free edge. A lot of people find it difficult to keep their shape of the nails with gel polish. Doing what I'm doing right now, giving it a once over swipe before you cure it, really makes a difference. So I'm just gonna flash cure those four fingers first of all, and then I'm going to do my thumb. Again, this is because I didn't want the um, top coat to pull because when you put your hand in the lamp your thumb is on its side and the top coat can pull towards one side of the nail and I didn't want that that's why I have done this um, nail separately 
so this has been a very very long video if you are still here leave me a rose in the comments let me know you're still here i know it's a long one i appreciate you if you're still here i mean i appreciate anyone watching any of my uh videos to be honest but i especially appreciate you if you are still here and i would like to say thank Thank you ever so much for coming to my channel, watching this video, spending some of your most precious time with me. I appreciate you. Thank you ever so much. If you have not done so already, please go ahead and click that subscribe button. Join the Frosty Fam. I'd love to have you. If you have liked this video in any way, shape or form, or it's helped you in some way, please go ahead and click that like button. It takes but a second for you to do, and I would appreciate it ever so much. Thank you. And if you feel like it, you are more than welcome to leave me a comment i am very happy to talk to you so this is the finished set i hope you've enjoyed this one guys you take care now peeps and i will speak to you all again very very soon bye for now Good times. Someday soon I'm gonna make it